Now that we've covered the basics of putting together uh, classes and objects, we're going to expand on this a little bit and see some more advanced things that you can do with classes. Still sticking to the basics, of course. Um, so what we saw with the init function is that we can create functions inside the class. Init is special because it happens anytime you create a new instance of the class, but you can create additional functions that are things that can be done by instances of your class. So for example, our robot may be able to say hello, and so we could write a function, say hello, that is just going to print hello. Uh, nothing is super exciting there, but you can create any function that you want inside the class. And then if you wanted to use that function, you would use the name of your variable that's an instance of that class. So here C3PO is our robot and we'll do C3PO dot say hello. Again, this is a structure that you should be used to from other things that we've done so far, whether it's with strings or lists, you've used this dot and then a function name to call a function that goes with your particular uh, object. So in this case, it's going to call the say hello function, um, and so it should just print hello. If we switch over to run that, uh, so we have an error here. It's the same error that we had before, which is uh, the self error. This is probably an error you're going to see me make a bunch of times because uh, in the programming languages I normally use, you don't have to put self in the parentheses. And so it's a thing that I'll, I'll classically skip. Uh, but self is going to go inside any function inside the class, but we don't need to pass that down here. It's automatically included. So we'll just call say hello with empty arguments, but when we define it, self is included in those parentheses. So now if we fix that and try to run it, it works fine and we can see hello shows up there. So uh, that's going to work the same for every robot. So if we created another robot, we'll just abbreviate there, uh, and we did say hello here it would print exactly the same thing. It's just going to print the word hello. So just to see that at work, let's run it. And so we can see it creates the new robot. It prints C3PO because we have a print statement back here to print the name. Then it says hello. We go to create the new robot and it says creating new, ro new robot and hello. So it's not doing anything that really is different depending on which robot it is. So we could adjust that and we could say print hello from and then self dot my name inside the function here and then it will be different for each robot. So we're using self to say refer to the particular object, the particular instance that's calling this and then my name is the attribute. If we run that, uh, I think I didn't save it here, let's try that again. Okay so we can see it prints hello from C3PO and hello from R2 now. Okay, let's add in some additional stuff. Uh, so we've been putting this self in here and using that to basically refer to attributes that belong to a particular instance of the class. However, we can also create attributes of the class itself that are accessible from every instance with the same value. So for example, we could say number of robots equals zero. And this is not an attribute that's available for every single instance. So C3PO isn't going to have a different number of robots than R2D2 does. Uh, it's for the entire class. It's going to start off equal to zero. And if we don't do anything, and then let's just print it after here, we print C3PO dot number of robots. That's going to appear right after the name. And you can see it prints zero, even though we already have a robot. Um, and that's because we just set it equal to zero and we didn't do anything. What we can do is in the init function, 
Every time we create a robot, we could say the number of robots equals the number of robots plus one. So we increment it every time we create a robot. And now, if we, uh, if we have this, so let's try it one time just like this. Uh, oh, we have another error here. And this is basically the same error that I keep making. Uh, instead of doing self like we have been, we use the class name here. So robot dot. And the difference between doing self like this and the class name like this is that self means the attribute is different for each instance, but the class name means that the attribute is shared among all the instances of this class robot. So if we try that again, now we can see that when we printed out the number of robots as one, if we print out, I'm going to copy this and put it down here. We're going to print that both for C3PO and R2D2. And we're going to do that to show that they both have the same number. So you run it again, and you can see when we've printed out the number of robots, both through the C3PO variable and the R2D2 variable, they're printing the same number because this attribute number of robots is shared among all the attribute, uh, all the instances of the robot class. So Here's the new things that we've learned in this lesson. One is that you can create additional functions inside a class that you can run by using the variable name dot the function name. You have to include self as an argument and uh, that doesn't go when you actually call the function but it has to go in the definition of the function. You can also create attributes that are part of the class that are shared among all of the instances. So while my name is different for each instance, number of robots is used um, by all instances together. They share the same value. And if you want to refer to that, you can use the uh, variable name dot number of robots, and that will be the same regardless of which instance you use. When you refer to it inside the function like this, you use the class name dot that attribute that's shared among all elements of the class. So that's a few more sophisticated things that you can do with classes and instances in Python.